Okay. If you believe that. Okay, I have these really cool church jokes. Numbers 1 to 101. We're not going to give all 79. There you go. There's the first number. I'm only telling two. <laughs> Applications are now being accepted for two-year-old nursery workers. <laughs> that was Lisa Rogers that picked that number. See, you can't blame me for these. Okay, we need another number. 101. Yell, Ian. 91. 91. Here you go, Ian. This is all you. This is actually pretty good. I'm reading them before I read them out loud. <laughs> the church will host an evening of fine dining, superb entertainment, and gracious hostility. <laughs> that is the church, isn't it? So now to the better comedian in the church, young Will Loudon has a joke for all of you. Cross a fish and an elephant. I don't know. Swimming trunks. <laughs> well done, Will. That was better than anything I did. Thank you. So I just have a few announcements this morning. You all received a card with all of our graduates on it. So please take a look at that. Send a note when you see them. Give them a hug. Congratulate them. But. You all have this. Janice made this this week. It's really cool. So check that out. Next thing is, you'll hear more about this this morning, but VBS was this week, and we just want to give a big thank you to everyone who helped out with VBS, the kids who came, the parents who brought them. It was a fantastic week over at Clenmore with our friends at Clenmore Church. So thank you, and those of you who prayed for us, thank you as well. Um, the other announcement is just that the activities committee, Judy Kerr, Lori Seminara put this whole shindig on today so at some point during the day please thank them for all their hard work thank you so much that's it for me let's worship god look at my vbs kids come on up front and lead us vbs kids please come forward to sing oh my Are you going to jump up and do it, Dale? What? I said, are you going to jump up and do it, Dale? Did you guys get any video of, of the closing with the archives of being responsible? Were you guys videoing any of that? Yeah, he made a good video. It's on Facebook. Oh, is it on Facebook? Yeah. yeah. If you look, get on my Facebook later. He has a got, he's got a move video. Okay. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got that. All right. Where are we at? My God? Yeah. 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 Ready? So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. But God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. But God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. But God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do.
job, guys. We continue our morning worship with prayer. Let us pray. <coughs> Holy God, we come before you, gracious, wonderful, yet holy and perfect God. And we know we're not holy and perfect. We know that even though this is a gorgeous day, that we didn't create the day. You created the day. We pray that we would be humble in our thanksgiving, that we would be gracious in our thanks living, and that you would help us, each and every one of us, to be repentant, that we would know we need to turn to you and say, I'm sorry. And so in this time, in this beautiful place that you created, we pray now together, saying, I'm sorry. Lord Jesus, we don't always say the right thing. I'm sorry. And you can repeat after me, congregation, when I say I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We don't always do the right thing, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. We don't always go the right places, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry. But we want so desperately to say the right things, Lord Jesus. And please say, yes, please. Yes, please. We want to go the right places, Lord Jesus. Yes, please. And we want to show your love to others, Lord Jesus. Congregation, yes, please. Lord Jesus, we are sorry, but we still need your help. And so even as these kids have learned all week how to do actions and jump around and smile and have a good time, they have also learned the love that you give each and every one of them, the peace, the joy, the kindness, the kinds of ways in which you want them to live. That, over and against what, unfortunately, they're taught, by us, us, the rest of the world. Help us in saying that we're sorry and to yes, please follow you, to remember what you want us to know, even as you told us to keep on living the way that you lived, to remember the things that you taught us and to live according to your teachings. Lord Jesus, we are sorry, but yes, please keep helping us. All the congregation says, Amen. Friends, you've received the peace of Jesus Christ on behalf of Jesus Christ. To all of you, the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you and also with you. Please pass the peace with your friends here this morning. <laughs>
Okay, let's uh, do the Gloria. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. You may have a seat and the kids can come on down here, down front. All right. Come on down. How are you guys today? Good. 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 <laughs> God is good. And we say all the time. Ready? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Let's do it again. I'm going to say God is good. You say all the time. And then I'll say all the time, and you say God is good, okay? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. And we give thanks for that. You all learned this week about what? Somebody raise your hand and, and tell me what you learned this week at Vacation Bible School. Double dutching. <laughs> no. Double dutching. Water. Yeah? You played with water? Yes, water jump rope. I saw that. What else did you learn? About Joshua and the ark. Awesome. What else did you learn? Um, about how, uh, the, about how Joshua led his disciples to the promised land. Good. Joshua led the people to the promised land, right? Okay. Other things you learned this week? What did Guy and Gianna teach you up on stage? What were they talking about? Remember? The fruit of the Spirit salad. Right. It was fun, wasn't it? Fruit of the Spirit salad. I chose one of the fruits that I'm going to be talking about today. One of the fruits. See it up? On the count of three, I want you all to say it. One, two, three. Joy! Joy. That's great. I think this is one of the best parts of the fruit of the Spirit salad. Because you can't even say joy without thinking joyfully, excitedly. And you guys did that really well. So today, we're going to be talking about joy. Did you know that you can be contagious in joy? How do you think you can be contagious in your joy? What do you think that means? I'm going to talk about two things that start with a C. Contagious? How can you be contagious in joy? What do you think? Sharing it. Yes, by sharing it, by being it. That's good. The other C word I'm going to talk about is being courageous. How can you be courageous by being joyful? This is a little tougher. What do you think? Why would it mean that you need to be courageous? It would be kind of tough. Right. You would have to be brave. Right. Not everybody is easy to be joyful with or even for. And it it means you have to be brave to be joyful. So today, and this wonderful day, remember that God gives you the fruits of the Spirit. The Spirit helps you to be like God wants you to be. And when you're joyful, you can be contagious and courageous. All right? Let's pray together. Loving God, thank you so much for these wonderful kids, for this day, for this place for our church family. Help all these young people as they grow up to be contagious and courageous in their joy. Not just the joy that's found in fun activities and experiences of the world, even though today is fun, and they'll probably remember this more than other Sundays, 
but because of you, the joy that you put in their hearts. We pray all of this in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. Find your spots. All right, they're still singing. Okay, now the Vacation Bible School kids, I should have just had you stay up here, are going to share one more song as a special music for us to enjoy. You're going to do Praise Your Name. So come on up, all the kids who've done VBS, and praise your name. Amen. And adults, please on, come on up too. I'll move this. Chair. Oh, God. Come on, Amy. I, I say right over here. This is as far as I go. Go ahead, you guys. You guys go ahead out. Come on, adult. Praise your name from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. You are my God, and all I want to do is praise your name. I praise your name and lift our voices and proclaim.
Okay, let's hear God's name now that we've praised God's name. Let's hear God's word today. Let's pray together. Holy God, we thank you again for this day, for this place, for everyone gathered here. We pray that as we hear your word spoken to us, all of it, that we would hear your message for us, all of it. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. The first passage of scripture that I felt led to share today was from John 15. We reread part of John 15 last week, but I'm backing this up a little bit. And we're going to begin John 15, the first few verses, first 12. Hear God's word to you. Jesus said this. I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does not, or, or every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. Hear this, disciples. Jesus said this. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Then we're going to turn to that fruit of the Spirit passage from Paul's letter to the Galatians. I'm going to back us up just a little bit also. Galatians 5. And I'm actually going to begin a little earlier than is printed because I want to put this in context, not only for the Galatians, but for those of you uh, who maybe don't know this passage. I want to make sure you know where in the context of this passage this list of the fruits of the Spirit against which there is no law comes. Because I believe this is also speaking prophetically for today in our time. Here it is. Galatians 5, I'll read 16, and I'll still end with that 26th verse. Here Paul, inspired and directed by our holy God. Paul says this. But I say, walk by the Spirit... And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, 
orgies and things like these. I warn you as I warned you to be before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So then, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. These are the words of the Lord. Church, thanks be to God. Be to God. Okay, so obviously, this has been a fun week, especially for the kids and the adult kids. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things that was most fun about this week, besides the fun music that you've heard, the actions we learned, was the joy that was evident in that place. Something about kids. They were even having a hard time when I was asking them how they contagious in joy. Kids are contagious in their joy. And so all week long, even when it got a little tough, maybe Thursday when the adults were getting a little tired, the kids came in with lots of energy and it was contagious. This happens just not just the week of vacation Bible school, but all the time. Teachers, you know this. Sometimes you have to settle down their contagious joy. <laughs> but there's something to that, that even in their kid, the kid energy that they just naturally have, that's contagious, that we can see in them the best and admittedly sometimes the worst of ourselves, especially those of us who are parents. Oh, where'd that come from? <laughs> and we look at our spouse, but then we realize it's us. <laughs> Joy can be contagious. Absolutely. Positively. No doubt about it. And today, you'll probably have some wonderful conversations if you haven't already. I would encourage you to have such conversations, to be contagious in your joy for seeing one another, for waking again this day. None of us knows how many days we're given. The beauty of this day, remember last year we were worried about a storm rolling in. Not happening this year. Contagious. Joy is contagious. So I want you to take a, a moment right now and share with one another something either in the last day or week or maybe even this morning that was fun and contagious in a joyful sort of way. So share right now with your neighbor or anyone around you one or two things that's been joyful in your life recently. Go for it. Funny cake. That'll be left over. 
Okay, I'll bring the box. You know what it is? You gotta come to the picnic if you want to picnic. Sorry. Sorry. Marty. They gave me a good chuckle. <laughs> Okay, so I know you guys have had fun doing this. So l let's let's have a few of the. What what did you share over here? What was one of your joyful things, Mike? Uh, we had a marvelous week this week. We sold our camper, and I got my motorcycle, my Harley back after being in the shop for 10 months. There you go. That's good. Other things? Yeah? Um, my biopsies came back negative. Excellent. There's joy in that. Yes. <laughs> Any others? Raise your hand if you, if you want to share. I want to just keep putting you on the spot here. All right, Sandy. We um, helped feed the kids at um, our program at Grant Street. That was really joyful. Yes, this is definitely joy spreading. Awesome. Other joyful things? Les? <laughs> working with everybody down at Glory Girl. Yes, working at one at Glory Girl yeah. yesterday. That was awesome. Joyful. Any others back here? Yeah, some joy. What a cheap mic. After a year, Bob, I got a job finally, and I'm working at the Confluence, and I like it a whole lot. Right. That's awesome. Anything else? I don't know. I'm just doing it. Just, it's fun. <laughs> Anything else back here? Any other joy you want to share? All right. Here comes one. I am so happy to be involved in this church with such a good thing. Yeah, you got it. Loving, caring people in our church. I got to say it my grandma's for the week. All right, that's fun. Grandma and grandpa are liking that. The North Carolinians are here. All right. Any other joy up here? Here comes some. Uh, uh, one time we went to the beach. All right. What's been joyful for you? Well, at 8 o'clock this morning, um, or a little after 8, Will was playing scales on the piano, and the little girls were singing along or humming along, almost to a barking sound, but they were still on pitch. So. <laughs> it was just fun to have that music in our house this morning. Yeah. Music. We, were, we, we had a sleepover in the den. That's right. This is exciting when you move into the den. There's another one over here. I'll be back. I had a week of vacation, so I was able to go to VBS every night and see all that joy. That was the best way to spend a week. I had to pray for somebody at um, Glory Girl yesterday. Awesome. All right. Oh, fine, Les. There's some significant <laughs> event happened in the Perry family. Terry, Terry and uh, my daughter, Erin, um, uh, just received word that uh, they'll be engaged to be married. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm nervous. <laughs> Lucas and Aaron are getting married. We're excited. Jack. It's okay. All right, hop up, Jack. This is John Calvin. Yeah, he is. This is John. He's going to be one of our new members. I just want to say I'm joyful that the Pirates called up Gregory Polonka. Oh, I am too. The hit streak continues. Yes. Uh, one thing for us was that Sharon's dad got a motor scooter. Which, uh, he's 94 to made up for the uh, idea that he couldn't renew his driver. <laughs> Over well. Love it. What's Sharon think? <laughs> She's happy too. That's good. Any other joy? Are you going to try to balance this out? Okay. Um. Our joy this morning was we woke up and we have our older nephew, Brandon, staying with us. 
And um, they all drew on each other's faces last night while they were sleeping with permanent marker. <laughs> so at about 8 o'clock this morning, Julie and I had a really good laugh. If you want to see the pictures, just see me after church. <laughs> Way to take that in stride. That's good. Any other joy? Chris, you are joy. You don't have to say anything. All right. Anything else? Yeah, Jane. I just retired. Hi. Right. Yay! Good job. See, there's contagious joy all over the... And actually, that was a perfect illustration of it. Because you probably thought at the beginning, what are we doing? And then it just started spreading and spreading. Okay. You can be contagious in your joy. Scott McKnight says this about the book of uh, Galatians, that at Galatia, there was tremendous strife among the people... Because the Galatians had surrendered their lives to the flesh in the name of freedom. What? Mm. Sound familiar? At Galatia, there was tremendous strife among the people because the Galatians had surrendered their lives to the flesh in the name of freedom. They had begun to devour one another personally, he goes on to say, in their desire for power and control. The flesh was given the upper hand. And so Paul entered into this terrible battle love this part, and bequeath them a message in a letter that still has its impact to this very day. Its message, here it is, church, is that when God's people live in the free spirit, they do not war with one another. Rather, they bring glory to God, who wants them to enjoy the fellowship that he promises, and that comes from the spirit. There it is. Sometimes the joy has to be courageous. That's where we're going with that second point of the sermon today. In John, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in them bears much fruit. If we keep God's commandments, it goes on to say, we abide, what? In his love. So both the law and the grace are connected in the commandments. The joy of the Lord will be in us. That's right in John 2. There's a connection of all these themes of spirit and truth, of joy. Loving God and loving one another equals a courageous joy. That's not always easy. And, and things in some ways haven't changed since this letter was written to the Galatians. I know some of you have been troubled by some of the events of our General Assembly this week. And I'm not going to go in length. I'm not going to go into detail now in this place because I want us to think about joy today and being contagious and courageous in our joy. But the truth of the matter is we still have to fight this fight even if there had been no votes taken up or down. And the fight isn't between one another. It's between us and God. We have to be contagious in our joy because of how much God has given us, and we have to be courageous in our joy because of how much God has given us. This, this quote sums it up really well. This is not biblical, but Tolstoy, Russian novelist, really is onto something here. If you want to see this later, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on Facebook. He said this. Listen to this, church. Joy can only be real if people look upon their life as a service and have a definite object in life outside themselves and their own personal happiness. I'm going to repeat that. Joy can only be real if people look upon their lives as a service and they have a definite object in life outside of themselves and their own personal happiness. So then, friends, if we live by the Spirit, we are then to walk by the Spirit. We abide in branches. Does that give us the spirit? Kind of, sort of. But sometimes the branches have to be pruned. Did you see that part of scripture? Or, or remember that or hear that for the first time? Even the healthy branch pruned. So that speaks to our time too. But also, the way in which we deepen our love of God is to abide in God, in the vine, in that spirit. This equals contagious and courageous joy. And my hope is that even as you all think about things in your own lives, 
that you'd keep it all in perspective. Because yes, some were deeply troubled by things that happened last week, but no, there was no doubt about it here today already when you shared your joy, that it was contagious, and much of that contagious joy was things that our church or churches are doing for good. We choose where we're gonna focus our energy. We choose, friends. Focus your energy on being joyful, on being contagious and courageous in your joy, and God will honor this. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our one God, even as the kids were saying, one plus one is one. Amen. At this time, we will gather our morning tithes and offerings. Having received, given, and received our offering, let us pray together as a church, united in that spirit. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the worship that we have been able to do. We pray that it has been lifting appropriately the right subject beyond ourselves, you. That you're that definite object that's bigger than us, that we give our lives to that service that we give our energy and our effort for. We know that people are hurting. We know that people are troubled. We know that people are concerned about their future. We also know that people have been healed, are feeling better, have less anxiety, and are looking forward to their future. And probably all of those descriptions are sitting right here together today both and. Because we experience a mix of emotions, we can be encouraged by one another or discouraged by one another. Because of that, Lord Jesus, your spirit comes in us, through us, and, and moves to connect us. That we may be connected to the true vine and become the true branches. This challenge is never easy, but it's always guided by you. Help us to not think that it's all up to us individually, or even that it's just up to this church, though you founded it so many years ago with that same spirit. That as we connect with others and do the right things that honor the right way of living, that we're doing exactly what you want us to. Feeding the folks over at Grant Street, partnering for Vacation Bible School, the World Vision Work Day that's coming up, our opportunities this summer to connect with our neighbors, 
even in the outing that we'll be doing to the Pirates game, and then our movie in our parking lot. We are trying as much as we can to be your light in downtown Newcastle. But your light, not our own. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we'd continue to remain contagious in joy, the joy that you give us, and courageous in speaking truth in love. Not just truth and not just love. Truth in love. Love that me, we may be a light in the darkness, that we may shine brightly despite whatever in our own lives or in the lives of others who make us feel dark. Lord Jesus, we pray that this day, in this place, that these wonderful people, the both and of the people, the ones who are hurt and the ones who are feeling better, the ones who are celebrating and the ones who are concerned, that we would be connected by your spirit, that we would feel joy, and that that joy would overflow in us as a church. We pray all of this in Christ's name, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand, and we'll be singing. This is one more of your favorites. We continue to sing your favorites that you gave me a few weeks ago. How great they are. And Steve, if you come up and lead us. Okay, how great they are. Let's praise God uh, joyfully through song here. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. glades I wander and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come, with 
with shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, my God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. All right, one announcement and then you'll receive your charge and morning benediction. Enjoy your time together. And we will be eating at 11.30 is the plan. So enjoy milling and fellowshipping before you feast on this wonderful day of abundance. Abundant good weather, abundant food, abundant fellowship. Friends, we know this, but it's worth hearing again. That each one of you matters. <coughs> matters to the one that created you. And matters to somebody else here. Because you know that. You have opportunities, even as you live, to live the way that he wants you to, in grace and truth, in contagious joy and courageous joy. That may mean today not saying something that you feel tempted to say, or that may mean saying something extra joyful and encouraging that you hadn't planned to say. It doesn't mean putting on a fake smile ever. It means being real. Really glad for all that God has really given you and really glad for the fellowship that's really here, right here, in this real wonderful space of God's real world. So even in that time, you have an opportunity, an opportunity to be courageous and contagious. You can do it. God wants you to do it. So let's do it. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of that Holy Spirit that gives us all those fruits be with each and every one of you today and always. And the church says, Amen. 1130 we enjoy.